Check, check, check. Oh, you can already hear me. Uh, should we start? Yeah? Okay, then. Uh, so, GraphQL, client side view. Naming is a bit different, but anyway, reasons, fact, takeaways, there's no numbers, but it's not really important. Uh, so, a little bit of my, about myself. I'm senior front-end engineer at Revolut. I have seven years in, uh, you know, paid development. I've been developing a bit longer, but like getting paid like maybe seven years or around that. Uh, so, I'm, I'm mostly doing some platform stuff in Revolut that's regarded to uh, web platform and stuff like that. So I'm working on developer experience mostly right now. Uh, so <clears throat> not to dig into it much, uh, let's go further. About Revolut, I think it's not very popular in France yet. Uh, so a little bit short information about us. So we founded in 2015. Uh, we have about 100 people hiring every single month. So I need to change the slides almost every talk. Uh, so we have about 20 plus offices in the world. Uh, we have eight plus millions users, and last valuation that we had two years ago was $1.7 billion. Uh, so what are we doing? We're basically a fintech startup based in London. Uh, we're working uh, all around the globe, in particular in US, Australia, Canada, Singapore, and all Europe, uh, European economic area countries, and we strive for even more markets, of course. Uh, and our main feature that we kind of when we started, it was uh, regular banking features plus zero commission of fixed exchange uh, rates that you can exchange money or spending. You go any, in any country, you spend, and it's very nice, zero commission or minimal commission um, you're getting. So you can read about us in the website. It's really cool. We're number one fintech startup or something uh, for the last three, four years or something. So uh, why GraphQL? So our small story. So, because everything should start with motivation and problems, I will explain motivation first. So, uh, first of all, the main motivation is that GraphQL is everywhere. Yeah, that's the first uh, motivation. Uh, second, we wanted to check it out uh, nicely and, you know, safely uh, to understand whether it's just a hype or it's actually really valuable for us. Uh, so, and because we want to further improve our development process, uh, uh, we thought like, okay, let's check it out on small, uh, small new pieces and on some old, very old pieces. Because again, GraphQL promises that old pieces can get better uh, if you will use it. Uh, so one of the biggest issues we've been having is that we have absence or complication with documentation. It's getting outdated because it's sometimes manually, sometimes it's half automatic, etc., etc., etc. So it's the first thing. Uh, we are, we're starving. We are just. It's horrible. Uh, then miscommunication or under-communication issues. Again, if something is getting broken, we will immediately get notified because of GraphQL. Why? I will explain later in detail. Uh, so how we approach it? Um, so just uh, for your understanding, there's uh, mostly two types of GraphQL um, service that we usually have. Uh, one is when you have, uh, I don't know, let's say Java service that talks directly to the SQL and also exposes GraphQL endpoint. Uh, and I think more common, I, I assume maybe 85, 90% of um, adopters of GraphQL using it, is that you have a huge gateway that talks to multiple APIs under the hood and it's basically, you know, gateway. Yeah, it just gets the answer and then talk to many services, gets the response and returns it back to the client. Uh, so, it's the same as, in our case, we have like a, almost as a classic backend for front, for front end. Uh, I think it's PayPal that introduced it first. It means that you have some client, let's say JavaScript web application, then the same team implements the node server, let's say that talks to a lot of REST-ish or REST APIs, uh, and it will, it will basically do multiple calls under the hood, stick it all together, and you will save uh, a little bit of latency and stuff like that. So it's a classic one. And uh, in Revolut, we implemented GraphQL-based BFF. It means that not every single team basically builds this small BFF. Uh, it means that m multiple teams build this one big GraphQL server that serves them all, which is nice because you can reuse a lot of code. Uh, you sh don't need to, you know, every single time you need to get something and stick together something from REST APIs or different kinds of APIs. You don't need to do it all the time. You implement it once, and then many uh, feature repositories, uh, clients, whatever, can reuse it. Um, and you still get one request, and you get all the stuff. So 
what GraphQL features promised improvements in the fields that I said, like our problems about documentation and everything. Uh, so first of all, it promises automatic documentation and also it gives you a nice cool playground. I think it was already shown. Uh, so, historically, it happened that our APIs are documented mostly by lots of functional tests, which is a cool thing. We have TDD mostly. It's kind of our motto. Um, so, which is all good for a backend engineer uh, that has all of the environment and ready to run them. Uh, but for front-end engineer uh, or any other client, it's rather not. Uh, so, it all contributes to the bad uh, experience for web developers. Why I emphasize on the web developers and not all the clients? Because uh, let's say, because it's all internal, we have also these applications like uh, Android and iOS, and their languages by default are typed. So even though some APIs are very, very old, they've been updating the types for all this time. So even though there's no documentation, you can look up the types and you can get uh, and guess what's happening uh, more or less. In our case, we had the JavaScript only. Right now we have TypeScript, so it's getting better. But we've been having JavaScript, so it was very, very, very bad. So that's, that's kind of sad. And it actually helps with that a lot. So, uh, so yeah, in a few five years in, some, uh, in production already, it can get a little bit of dangerous and scary, of course. Um, and um, even though we have this kind of proxy thing, it still enforces documentation. Uh, so, so what another thing it does for us is that Playground is really improves onboarding of new, new members. Even though it's, again, stupid proxy that we are implementing every single time there's a new endpoint appears, it improves uh, onboarding of new members because in previous, you have all these endpoints and the guy needs to, to get some cookie, then he needs to go to the postman or any other tool, then attach this cookie and then do one request to get some set of IDs, then do another five requests. So it's extremely annoying and uh, people are usually get bored and never even going to do that. I mean, it's just not good experience uh, once again. Uh, so this amazing playground is actually helps uh, people to understand things a lot. This uh, thing on the slide, what I have is one graph. It's exactly the thing about scene. In the end, we're going to explain a lot of cool stuff. I mean, it just, this talk is just nuts. It's crazy. Very good. So, um, and it really helps because you can see a lot of uh, connections between entities because you don't have just IDs and you have no idea what the user is or whatever. You just you can actually fetch the things. You can see the connection. And it's, it's really beneficial and cool. Uh, so also it sets product and backend uh, pe people to um, uh, better communication of their needs. So uh, like small example that we had. Uh, we have one feature that we implemented, small, uh, uh, you know, small version, how you say. Mm. I forgot the word. Anyway, um, so, and we've not been touching for one year. So it's working, nobody touches it, and right now we want to make a little bit of improvements into it. And the, uh, okay, it's gone. Uh, and it's get back again. So, um, and we have, uh, and, and the product guy comes to me, come, come to me and said like, okay, we want to implement that and that and that. And I said like, that's all cool, but it's impossible because backend doesn't support it. He said like, why it does not support it? Can you prove me wrong? I said like, no problem. Here's the GraphQL. I wrote everything that is possible with endpoints that we have. He says like, okay, this is really not enough data to actually implement this feature. I need to go to the backend guy and ask him for a little bit of, a little bit more. And he went back and said, like, okay, yeah, that's true. It's not enough, to be honest. And he just implemented. I also wrote a little bit of types for him in the GraphQL, uh, this schema language. And yeah, we just basically communicated using one same language that backend guys understand, frontend guys understand. And it's actually easy to understand if you don't even know GraphQL much. And that really helps uh, to better communicate uh, between the teams. Um, so, and um, another small nice thing is that our playground is hosted on the same domain. So all the cookies and everything is already attached if you log it, log it in. So you can play with the stuff. Um, another thing that helps us to keep this documentation updated uh, is that uh, every single GraphQL server automatically type checks uh, the data that is going to return in runtime. Uh, so it means if we are uh, going to do some uh, mistakes when we're creating the schema manually, or if there will be any breaking changes introduced by the proxy services, uh, we will immediately get the runtime errors, and more likely we will catch them on the end-to-end -end test or probably on the staging environment. And because it will immediately fail fast, we will get the information, we will fix it, and we 
with fixing it, we will get the updated documentation immediately for all the clients. Um, Another thing that's uh, amazing, especially if you have a native GraphQL that backend guys are implementing, not the front-end team implementing proxy, uh, is that uh, you get free types and code generation. So uh, there, is a, there is an amazing p p project named GraphQL Code Generator that will do the trick for you. So it basically uses uh, schema as a source of true, um, because every single GraphQL server should return you uh, a schema. Uh, whole schema of what can be returned. So uh, basically, this tool takes the schema, generates a lot of TypeScript code, and from this TypeScript code, you can also generate a little bit of boilerplate code that you don't need to write yourself. I will show a little bit later about that. Uh, another thing that we still didn't implement because we then have this multiple uh, feature repositories, etc. We have only one repository, so it still works for it. Um, that. It actually helps you to catch all these breaking changes pretty nicely once again. Uh, so let's say you have this GraphQL server, you change something on it. Uh, it's a breaking change uh, for some clients, because some clients probably don't, don't even use this, some of the fields. Uh, so CI-CD runs, then after it's done, you start the CI-CD um, tasks for your clients that actually rely upon this GraphQL server. And on the CI-CD, they got generated TypeScript, then they get this TypeScript. In the future, uh, in the future repo, it starts to compile. And let's say three of them were fine, and one of the clients were not. So was not. So uh, you get the breaking change. You go fix it. You know where it is because TypeScript gives you, you know, uh, nice, beautiful error messages. Sometimes not, but anyway, uh, you fix it, and you're good to go. So. So it kind of gives you end-to-end -end type safety, especially if you don't have a proxy, if you have a native implementation. It means that if you change something, if, I don't know, your, uh, your uh, GraphQL schema generates from the Postgres uh, schema, let's say, because there's uh, Hasura, let's say, one, one, um, one of the projects that basically takes your Postgres, sticks to it, gets all the schema, and generates uh, the GraphQL schema for you, and you will add one field, or you will change the type of it, or you will do something with it, it will immediately propagate to all, all your clients, because they will see the new, the new server, they will get the schema, they will generate TypeScript uh, typings, and if it's a breaking change, you will immediately get slap on the face. Uh, that will tell you that you need to fix stuff, and it means that you have end-to-end -end type safety from the server, uh, from the database to the server, and then to the clients, or just from the server to the clients, no matter no matter what you're doing. So it's kind of cool. Um, and uh, about yeah, so about the GraphQL code gen. So this is the small uh, example how it looks when you use it in Apollo in the client on the client side. You have use query function, and you have two arguments. It's not important, but the, the most important thing that you put this in this generic, you, you put the data that's going to be returned and the query variables that query actually accepts. So if you, let's say, have this query that takes post ID that is a string and with exclamation mark, it means that it's required in this query, otherwise it will not work. Uh, you then run this small, beautiful CLI command with some config, and it will generate you this code. So it will generate this string, it will put it in the TypeScript, it, it will gen generate the type query result that will have all the fields and everything nested, and it will generate use component commands query. So you will use it like that. So as you can see, generic is gone, you don't need to put it, which is, ensures that everything is type safe, safe, and you don't need to put this generic, because as far as I remember, by default, just generics are automatically any, which means that, I mean, everything is not typed, which is not cool. And this tool ensures that you will have a type safety by default with no disk clutter and no additional uh, typing, which is great. Uh, so, of course, we've got a little bit of issues after release, and I will just point them out so you know about them. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, the issues uh, were that a single point of failure, right? So, if you break stuff, critically on the server, I don't know, it will say undefined is not a function or something. Uh, it will be a single point of failure. Everything will die, like everything, every single feature. If it's a small, you'll break one small thing. Of course, you'll just get null instead of the field, let's say. So, But if you're really bad at stuff, you will actually break everything, which is not a good thing to do. Uh, I mean, but it's with many things and any gateway, I think, pretty much. Uh, so another thing that 
a lot of backend guys were not really happy is that it was hard to debug. Uh, why, I will explain later. Um, uh, schema was also too strict uh, because, I mean, it, it was breaking even on the addition of enum, which was wrong. Um, so how did we solve it? So um, about uh, hard to debug. Um, first thing that backend guys been complaining that back in the day when it was like mul multiple requests, they was able to open network tab in Chrome and see what requests been done, what the return types, uh, what the error messages, uh, what the code of um, HTTP, etc. And of course, once we introduced this proxy, they've been seeing only GraphQL, GraphQL, GraphQL. What 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 it what it mean? And, and everything is 200. Um, so to fix that. Uh, we actually, I actually added the requested the request collector extension. Uh, extension is one of the fields uh, in GraphQL that you can actually put anything into it. It's not typed, uh, but uh, you can put a lot of meta information. Usually, it's used for meta information about the query. Uh, so, a request collector is basically sees what request been done to actually resolve this query and shows all of the answers like uh, what the the type of methods been done, what the return code, etc., etc., etc. So, backend guy opens this GraphQL thing, goes to the um, to the JSON that is returned, and he can clearly see what request failed, what 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 are not, etc. So he can clearly see what's the issue. So that it's not GraphQL proxy, but his own ser service, which is cool. Um, yeah. So all enums, uh, we just made all the enums that we're returning to the strings now. So unless it makes sense to enforce. If it's some, you know, some if or some switch is really dependent on some enum, we of course will keep it enum just just to be sure that stuff will break um, if there is a breaking change. But for everything else, we just return strings uh, just to make sure it's not breaking on addition of enum, which is absolutely not dangerous in most this 99% of scenarios. Um, so this is how how looks this. Uh, request collector uh, metadata. So you have this extension thing, and then you have proxy executor metadata, and you see requests, fails are, failed are empty right now, and then you have successful requests, and you can see the URL, you can see the method, you can see the params, the request ID to debug things further, etc. So it almost looks like a network tab, but in a JSON, in, in a JSON you know? So, um, just uh, main conclusions. Uh, yes, so let's revisit the main motivation problems and see whether we kind of fix them with GraphQL or not. So, um, first one, yeah, first improvement of development process was just a motivation, so it's not much. Uh, we, we reached a goal, we did the research, which was the most important probably, um, because we didn't have any urge to move to GraphQL. It was just like to see how it's working to actually use it where it will make the most of the sense. So absence of or complication of the documentation. Actually, I mentioned before that we used it for the legacy pieces and for new pieces, and in the legacy pieces, it actually helps us a lot because it was a huge API with huge with a lot of connections, and it was really hard to work with it. And uh, basically, using this GraphQL typing, runtime type, type checking, etc., we gradually with fail, 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 and at the end of the day, we've got a huge type that is, I don't know, maybe 450 lines of code. Um, and actually typed very nicely and very precisely. So we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, optional, 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 because, I mean, it will make our code too defensive. So we wanted to make it as precise as possible. And this actually helps us a lot with this. Uh, also, miscommunication, undercommunication, mitigation is what I said. If the breaking change wasn't communicated, it actually breaks, which is cool. Um, it's a small benefit, uh, but I mean, why not? Um, so, as I said, documentation is just fixed it by enforced documentation because every single GraphQL server actually returns the documentation. Even though you're lazy and you don't want to write documentation, it will get something for you, at last something. So, uh, better communication, no breaking changes, we've got by enforced documentation, by end-to-end -end type safety, and the runtime type validation. Um, another, some bonus points that we've got also on the top of it, that there is a lot of ready-to-go clients, like Apollo, Relay, URQL, and they are amazing. They give you a lot of features, comparing to other, uh, our Redux baked something cache that is actually not really working well if you compare with these guys. These guys you just install, you put in your application, and it just works. It's just 
awesome. I mean, if you start something new from scratch, it's just super great. I, even if, if you have new stuff, it's, I mean, old stuff will benefit from it too. Like, we, many things are for free. Uh, another thing is mock servers and mock data generation. Again, you have all the schema, you have all the types, so uh, you can just generate uh, a lot of fake data out of it without moving a muscle. So it's really, really convenient for unit tests, it's convenient for in integration tests, uh, for end-to-end -end tests and everything. It's, when you're developing something new and backend is not ready, you just implement this in the schema, you get the fake, and you implement against this fake, then you uh, switch on the real server and your feature is just working on the front end. So it's, it's really, really cool. Um, main takeaways, though, is that uh, when you do the proxy, uh, you need to understand problems and risks with it. Because, I mean, there is some overhead that sometimes you probably don't want to do, and it's absolutely fine. Um, so uh, another thing is that uh, take it for new projects, preferably without proxy, then it shines even better. Uh, for new projects, I, I, I must say, like it's just absolutely mandatory to do that because front end will love you, back end guys actually also will love you, and everyone will be happy. I mean, you will hit some roadblocks at the beginning, but you will learn really quickly. Fortunately, GraphQL is not new anymore. There's a lot of information online, so uh, it's not like it was maybe three years ago. Uh, Another thing, it's, uh, it works nicely to facilitate and auto-documentate uh, by failure old APIs. If you have some old APIs that nobody knows how they're looking, what they return, whatever, by failure it will help you to type it properly and actually uh, document it nice, nicely. So another thing is if, if you don't have urge uh, to optimize for number of requests or you have a lot of other stuff uh, already done and it's actually working and it's all good, you don't have you don't need to urge and optimize for that. You, I really recommend in your company to try the things a little bit, to play with it, to understand how it all works, that it's not a magic, that it's, you know, just the code that you write and it just call the function one by one and get your result. Um, but don't, like, actually jump on the hype train and completely write everything. It just makes no sense. It just makes no sense, but you should try it anyway in your company to understand it better. Um, so uh, use it if you have multiple clients that are out of your control. This is also really, really good. Because they're out of your control, but uh, you can see the usage per, per field. You don't need to deprecate things. It's, it's really amazing. I think next, next uh, talks will explain in detail every single piece of what I'm saying here, so I'm not going to dig into it. Uh, so should you use it? At the end of the day, as I said, uh, it depends. Uh, I mentioned all that stuff. Like, everything in software engineering. Um, but uh, I really recommend for the new stuff. For old stuff, if it works for you, just keep using it. But for new stuff, really try it out, because front-end guys will love it. And I think it's pretty much it. Uh, I think we have a little bit, like two, two minutes for questions. And this your, your QR code has a lot of nice URLs to all these tools and a little bit more. So please scan it and educate uh, yourself, yeah. All right, that was, that was great. So a nice big hand of applause for that talk. Thanks. While the next speaker uh, goes ahead and gets set up, do we have any questions in the audience? Any questions? You can ask me afterwards. I think it was just so clear and so concise. Nah, nah. So basically, <laughs> GraphQL is also a nice to have at times. Yes, it's nice to have. It's not mandatory, but I mean, I really recommend to try because uh, front-end guys will love you. I mean, if you have multiple clients, that's going to be a... It just, I don't want to sell the stuff, and I don't have any interest in that. We're just using it. I'm not like, you know, have the company <laughs> or something like some of these guys. But I really, really recommend you to dig into it and to be on the same page with this community and at last, you know, peek at it and look what's going on there. Because you, once there will be a use case and you'll say, like, yes, this is use case, and you will use it, you will absolutely love it because rest is really limiting for you. So, yeah, this is what I recommend. Very great. 